Hi ladies, hope you're all doing well. So I'm back and yep, I have given birth on the 10th of September. My baby was due on the 1st and he ended up coming on the 10th, but I'll talk about that later on in the video. Anyways, he's in the background. <laughs> so this video is going to be about packing your hospital bag. Um, which I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you're probably due soon. If you are, congratulations. And if you're not, then I guess you just miss me. Anyways, let's just get into the video. I've got a list here of um, basically what I took with me. So just to make whoever is going to hospital with you's life easier, um, you can pack two bags. So what I did was I packed a bag for my son and I packed a bag for myself just because sometimes it can get hectic there and things get messy and you can't find things when you need them. So anyways, in, I'll start off by saying what I had in my bag and then I'll move on to Zachariah's bag which is my son. So grab like, you know, those see-through toiletry bags, one of them, chuck in there your mini shampoo, mini conditioner, mini shower gel, mini toothpaste, your toothbrush, um, and then you wanna add your hairbrush, hair ties, definitely. You don't want your hair all over the place while you're in labor, cause that's super annoying. Um, lip balm, cause your lips do get quite dry but you can substitute that with nipple cream, which you do need to take as well. I use the lanolin one, I think that's what it's called. It's a purple tube, um, really good for sore nipples, for dry, anything really. <laughs> I'm gonna take some wipes, um, you know, like makeup wipes, just any type of wipes when you wanna freshen up and um, you want some pads. Now I use the tenor ones, um, the, the ones with the most absorption. I don't know which color it was, I forgot. They're amazing. They're not adult nappies, but they're huge and you feel safe with them on, basically. You want to take some breast pads because you will be needing those. You might um, leak some milk when it finally comes in. And moisturiser because breastfeeding can dehydrate you a lot. And some old knickers for obvious reasons. Um, and your phone charger, of course. In terms of clothes, I'll, I'll talk you through um, it in order kind of thing. So you want to take an outfit, you can walk around the hospital with um, because if you're expecting your first you're probably not going to dilate too quickly and they would want you to probably walk around the hospital up and down some stairs um, and then you want to take a, an outfit you will give birth in I took a baby doll so you know like a pyjama dress kind of thing and make sure you get a cheap one because it will get absolutely ruined, ripped, whatever <laughs> um, and then a set of two pyjamas, just I took two because I didn't know how long I was staying for, last time was a week, this time was two days, so a set of two pyjamas that I felt comfortable in and that I could breastfeed in so I could unbutton easily and just an outfit to leave hospital in, um, oh also you want to take some flip flops and socks because you can get cold and a robe and that's pretty much it for my bag, for my baby's bag I packed um, back of nappies so you want to get the newborn nappies I use pampers um, some water wipes or pampers wipes whichever floats your boat and if you don't want to be using wipes take some cotton pads as well and I took one towel and two muslin cloths muslin cloths are those um, square big square towely kind of ones but thinner material I use them um, for when he's um, done, you know, a poo and I wash him, um, that's what I use to dry him in. <coughs> and they can use him to use it when he comes out just to wipe him. You want to take two small, um, two to four small cotton towels. Now I use them for all sorts. I use them to put under the baby's head when he's asleep. I use them when I'm burping him to put on here, when he's feeding to wipe him, um, things like that and I took one cellular type of cover so you know the normal covers but the ones with holes in midwives seem to prefer them to thicker ones they won't allow you to wrap him in really thick um, material and a swaddle if you're planning to swaddle your baby so I took two baby hats and two mittens although most sleep suits now have the sleeve where you can fold over the hand so you don't really need mittens just have a look at whether yours does have that or not. Um, I took a, well I didn't take one but I would recommend you do so take a pack of, a starter pack of Aptimil milk um, just in case you never know what happens 
um, six bodysuits, so you know the underneath ones without legs, um, but I took full sleeve ones just because of the weather, it is quite cold. Um, and then I took six sleep suits, which are the full sleeping ones, um, and a cardigan and like a coat slash snowsuit type of thing, you know, like a thicker material just for when we leave hospital. So that's everything I took with me. In terms of labour, I'm just going to skip through it really quickly. So if it's your first, it might be a completely different experience. Even, to be honest, second, third, fourth, it's always going to be a different experience. Even for, even for the same woman, she might experience different labours, different pregnancy. So with mine, the two weeks before I actually gave birth, every single... Pretty much every day I think I'm going into labour just because I had on and off contractions and they would come quite painful and then they would fade. Um, but eventually on the 10th of September at 1am I started contracting and they were the type that like just made you hold your breath and eventually made you cry. <laughs> so 1am I started contractions, they were about 7 minutes apart. By 5am I just came upstairs and told my husband that we had to leave because I couldn't take it anymore. Um, so by six we got to hospital, she checked me and she was like, you're about three to four centimetres. If you're new to this, you have to reach ten centimetres to be ready to push and have your baby. So I was three to four centimetres, but it was painful, like it was bad. Um, obviously I planned for an epidural, I was gonna have that epidural no matter what. Um, so I got to three to four centimetres at um, six, I should say, when she checked me. And then things started progressing really quickly. Um, half an hour into it, I was literally screaming the hospital down. Um, I couldn't handle it. It was coming on really quickly, really painful. It was about every three minutes, I'd say. So at um, seven-ish, they took me down to where I was going to be getting my epidural. At about, uh, I'd say, half seven, the guy who does the epidural, I can't pronounce the name, but... The doctor that does the epidural came, they talk you through the side effects, etc. Um, before they do that, and I was just like, yep, 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 come on, hurry up, hurry up, I want my epidural now. Um, so he was kind of like, so he, as he was sanitizing his um, hands, I got a really bad contraction, like crazy. By this, by this time, I was literally like, I, I lost it, I was screaming all the time, I was screaming pretty much every 30 to 50 seconds it felt like I was in labor like it didn't feel like I was three to four centimeters dilated so anyways I got a contraction at about half seven where I felt the urge to push um, and in my head I was thinking I can't be dilated like this can't be it no chance I'm having my epidural so um, the midwife looked at me and she was like uh, are you pushing I was like no 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 <laughs> I'm not pushing and then the next um, the next contraction I was fully pushing, I couldn't lie. So she was like, I'm gonna have to check you, even though she didn't um she didn't think I was gonna be fully. So um she checked me and I was 10 centimeters, I was ready to give birth only two hours after coming into hospital, which is crazy considering my last pregnancy, I was in hospital for about two, three days. Um so literally the epidural was there in front of me, like already. They were just waiting for me to sit in position so they can give me the epidural um, and I literally just looked at her and it was my nightmare. I was just like, no, I'm not going to push. You need to give me that epidural. Um, and eventually, obviously, I did start pushing and within about 10 minutes of pushing, I'd say less, he was born. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty much the... Um, that's pretty much the labour story. Now, if I was to give you advice, I'd say keep an open mind with pregnancy and labour especially. It's out of your control, basically. Um, you can plan and plan and plan and things can go completely the opposite direction. Either way, whatever happens is for the best. As long as you're healthy, baby's healthy, that's all that matters really at the end of the day. Um, and then obviously after your baby's born, they try to put them on you to latch um, and just to bond kind of thing so another advice I'd give is breastfeeding can be really difficult when I had my first no one spoke to me about breastfeeding not even my mum no one prepared me for how painful breastfeeding was um, so I would say just stick to it 
try your hardest. Um, it is painful, but trust me, that pain um, gets less and less and less. And then by two two months, I guess, maximum probably, you won't feel pain anymore. Um, um, so yeah, just stick to, if you plan to breastfeed, stick to it. It will get better um, and you will become pro at it, basically. You'll... You will feel like a cow, I have to say. <laughs> that is true, you do feel like a cow, but it's all for a good, good cause. Um, oh yeah, before I end the video, I just wanted to say hello to all the new subscribers who have come through. Um, I'm really grateful that you have subscribed and I hope you enjoy all my videos um, and all the coming videos. And I will see you all on my next video.